Hi all, welcome back to the Flirting with Travel podcast. I'm Lexi. And I am Misty. And today we are talking about Misty traveling while bougie, because she is bougie. And all the other nuances of fly. <laughs> Enjoy. Hi boy George. Thanks for coming for the interview today. <laughs> <laughs> it's this hat, it's bringing out the worst in me. <laughs> and now I'm warm too. The <laughs> rain. So, I know we travel a little differently. I like to believe I travel like a normal person, mm-hmm. and you travel like a rapper who's like just balling out of control all times. Mm. Not really, I wish. Not <laughs> there yet. I'm trying, but I, I, have, I have budgeting you gonna get restrictions. There? I mean, don't we all? Yes. So, what kind of traveler are you? Um, I mean, I'm a bit more... Um, Let's see. I'm a loyalty whore. I really believe in staying in the same places, um, mm-hmm. same brands a lot. So I used to be a SPG member. They've now merged with Marriott. So I'm a Marriott Bonboy member, which really actually watered down my own status because like gold, plat- like used to have some good perks, but now mm-hmm. it's like a thousand of us. So. Oh, because you brought in all, like, the Marriott people. Exactly. Those are business travelers. And you can't compete with business money. You cannot. So, um, I mean, I'm not, because I'm not writing it off yet. I will, though. (laughs) No, I think I like to stay comfortably for myself. Um, What that means is, I typically don't go under four stars in a hotel, because I'm always at the W, if, like, that city doesn't have a W. I like the Aloft mm-hmm. because they're basic rooms, but yeah. it's the perks and the amenities that come with it, plus all my points and my upgrades and that stuff. Gotcha. So I'm thinking of Aloft because we stayed at Aloft in Cancun, right? Right, on our way to Cuba. Okay. Basic room, mm-hmm. had hot water, good pressure. On the way to Cuba, we weren't that impressed, but on our way back, it was amazing. Oh, I know. It's weird, like, getting back into Mexico and just feeling like you're living in the lap of luxury. Life! <laughs> so, it, well, then how important is, like, room type to you? Because aloft, you're right, they are kind of basic rooms, but always really standard quality no matter where you go in the world. So I was recently at a W, and it was a suite, right? Mm-hmm. They said the room was a suite. I didn't create the status. They determined it was. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure because they merged with Marriott if they just decided to not put anything in the bathroom but like they didn't have lotion they didn't have soap they didn't have toothbrushes shower caps I had to call down and get this stuff I'm like where's all of the uh amenities I checked Mm -hmm. for drawers there was nothing and I get they're trying to make (laughs) these these rooms like utilitarian and everything Mm -hmm. but um can I get the rest of the stuff well, I like that a lot of places are doing that and trying to call it being eco-friendly because we know right. it has nothing to do right. with saving the environment and all about bottom line. I want everything. I was at this, um, so Caesars opened in Dubai mm-hmm. and um, they're not part of any membership I'm on, but I mm-hmm. normally book my hotels or apartments through booking mm-hmm. for Dubai because they have a good, I mean, okay, so when I travel, if I'm traveling alone, I'll get a hotel room. Mm-hmm. I'll typically stay with the same brand I always stay with. But if I'm traveling with friends, then we normally will get an apartment, Airbnb or whatever you want to call it. Now, for some reason, I can't book via Airbnb. They kicked me off their platform and then had the audacity to tell me that they don't owe me a reason. They said, we don't have to give you a reason or 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 why or any of that. You just can't book with us anymore. I was like, fuck you. Do you think you got like a bad review or something? No, I think what it was is I was in Kuwait trying to add a new credit card. And you know how they're supposed to send you those, like you're supposed to verify what they deposit in your account? Mm -hmm. Well, they kept sending me like two and three cents. And Uh, for whatever reason, every time I put it in, they were like, it's not the right amount. But it was just taking a really long time to go back and forth. I think it was that. But they have the worst customer service. Anyway, I'm going to trash them. They have the worst customer service. They don't have a fucking answer. They don't want to be helpful. All of their customer service reps work from home. So, I mean, like, do they really have a stake in the company? I mean, I would assume yes. If I'm being honest, I've never contacted their customer service, only because I've always, almost always had good experiences with Airbnb. Imagine if you got a house that you didn't like. They would do shit all for you. Nothing. So, things like that, I always feel like, were you really looking at the pictures if the... 
if it didn't come up quite right. Now, say the pictures were totally misleading and then the reviews were not helpful, then I might be like, hey, you better tell me something about this property. True. I mean, in Barcelona, one of the Airbnbs we booked when you and I went, it was... I was like, so where is the apartment oh, that moved... you said? They'd moved all the furniture into that one room, remember? Yes, and they made it look really good. And then they decided, like, they went to Ikea, had a big hall, right. put it all in one space, and then took it all away and put it in different areas. I'm like, well, this doesn't look right. But the apartment in Granada, though. You know, I don't even know if pictures could have done that justice. No, but it was so It was pretty. really nice. And it was just so well set up, and there were, like little things knickknacks and everything that like make a house a home it was a lot of loose little Mm knickknacks that was um layering to the Mm -hmm. house i really liked it yeah so for you like you said four stars or above Mm -hmm. which i feel like i get on an intuitive level but at the same time i feel like we're staying in different four stars no not when we're together we stay in the four star i stay in uh (laughs) when we're together but no i mean like so i prefer my hotel to have um, again, I really actually only stay at SPG properties most mm-hmm. of the time because I really don't like Hyatt's, um, or Holiday Inn's. I don't like... Is it something about the branding, the decoration? The... It's like really blah. Oh. And I feel like if you're going to get a basic ass room, I need to at least accrue some points for this so gotcha. that I can eventually get a free night or mm-hmm. some kind of late checkout or something. And that was the other thing about that. Because we've merged now with the Marriott people... They took our late checkout from 4 p.m. to 2 p.m. I didn't like it at all. Oh, yeah, that's... I mean, 2 p.m. is pretty luxurious, but if you were used to 4 p.m., that is really nice. It is. It is. So, I would find, like, hotels are weird to me because I feel like if you're in a um, $150 to $250 range, you're never going to get a really good room. Or Depending two- on the country. Well, yeah, depending on the country. Yeah. But I feel like most places, and I mean like 250 a night, because like Switzerland, for 209 a night, you were getting like a regular room. That's Switzerland though. I know. We stayed in, when we were in Denmark, we mm-hmm. stayed in um, the hostel, generator hostel, which is mm-hmm. actually really nice. We had our own room with our own shower. But I really think, I think that was like 100, what was that, 100 euro? It was high. But when you go anywhere else, that would have been like nothing. It would have. But even in Barcelona, the generator there was, it was like 60 or 80, something like that. But it's much cheaper than the regular. Mm-hmm. So if I'm with people, we'll book through like HomeAway or VRBO. Booking.com has um, apartments on there. I booked through mm-hmm. Booking.com. I had success. I did it in Amsterdam, and mm-hmm. it was a really nice place, really cute. The pictures did it no justice, and it turned out to be really nice. Ah. No, I mean, that, like, I couldn't even say that I have actually got to see my place. That was the place in Slovenia I got, and I never made it to Slovenia. And they knew that the airline had went had gone bankrupt, and I couldn't get there. I'm like, well, we'll give you 50% back. So I go to Booking.com's customer service, and I've historically been really successful with them. They've mm-hmm. been really helpful. Mm-hmm. Plus, I've, I have booked with them for years. Since, like, 2011, I've been booking with mm-hmm. them. And they're like, oh, they said 50%, so that's all we're going to give you. I'm, in my mind, I'm like, the fuck? What does this mean? What does my loyalty with you mean if I can't even get my money back on a circumstance right. that's not I my I think fault? it's because they have to list the homes with the... I don't know, because I, they do have some really crazy... Most of the time, all you can, all you can do when they don't want to agree to give you your money back because they have some really crazy rigid... I mean, if the airline went out of business, what they want you to do, walk to the country? Exactly. So... Cut me some slack, damn it. Yeah, after that, I was like, well, I don't think I'll ever do an apartment again through Booking.com. And I actually will think twice about it because the lack of customer service after years of loyalty bothers me. So I get why you're, like, dedicated to, I guess not SPG, but Bonvoy now. Right, but I read a whole article about home stays, Mm -hmm. like, not gaining as much popularity or losing some of their popularity because of the customer service aspect that is not there that a hotel does offer you. Right. Because they are more flexible when there are last minute changes. And there's no consistency. Because like say you're going to stay at a W, you know that every W you Mm -hmm. go to, the service level is going to be on par with everything that you're used to. Yeah. But, I mean, even if you go to, like, a Holiday Inn, every Holiday Inn you go to... They're going to have the same, yes. Whereas with, like, Airbnb and HomeAway and 
apartments on booking.com sometimes it's a really good opportunity and sometimes it's Mm -hmm. not and you really can't even complain like it's hard but so i mean and then i fly with the same people so i fly with qatar airways which is part of one world i'm platinum on them so i get Mm. all the platinum perks i typically buy an economy ticket the second tier up not the basic fare but the one that you can do um no change fees for Mm -hmm. free and then I just use my points to upgrade because once you're platinum, it gives you a hundred percent of your points. Oh, nice. So any of your miles that you mm-hmm. used or you accrued, it gives you double that. Oh, okay. And then you get these Q credits. Um, the Q credits or Q points? Q credits. You get. 40. I mean, you could lie to me. I wouldn't know. But I don't want to. You get forty for being gold every time you reach gold, mm-hmm. and sixty for being platinum. And then you can typically upgrade. So I'd fly business, which is what I flew home this time, mm-hmm. with 42 Q points. Okay. In my lay flat bed. I drank a lot on that flight. They just keep bringing you wine. They're like, would you like another glass? Mm, yes, please. It's like the one where you said you drank two whole bottles. Not mini bottles. Two regular sized bottles of wine. He was keeping me plied with liquor. That's... I just eat, drink, intense. watch a movie, sleep, wake up, eat, drink, watch a movie, sleep, drink, drink, drink. And then finally when we landed, I was like, man... I'm buzzed. Man. Like, I'm really, like, I might actually be a bit, like, lit. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, so I, I fly with Qatar home all the time. Now, once I get to the States, mm-hmm. I switch to Delta because one Delta has newer planes. And American, even though they're part of one world, doesn't have new. I don't know what they're doing with their fleet. Does Delta have newer planes? I thought their average plane was, like, 15 years old. Mm-mm. They've been replacing their planes. Oh, good for I've them. I've yet to be on a plane that's older than five years in the last, like, four nice. or five runs. But for their price tickets, mm-hmm. they, they, they should, should have they, updated planes. Right. Seven, eight hundred dollars. Like, what am I paying for? And that's a regular main seat. You know they got a basic fare underneath main. Oh, yeah. So all of the big airlines are doing this now, where they have, like, their basic fare that literally you only get the bag that fits underneath <laughs> your seat. Because... I mean, well, what they realized is that your smaller, ultra-low-cost carriers Mm -hmm. have been leading the pack Mm -hmm. on actually making money and not being in, like, fear of going under. But I don't think they actually list that many basic fares, and I don't think they're that competitive. Well, no, they're not competitive because it's still Delta versus all of these others that can cut, like... Delta can't cut their prices like that. They can't survive as their business model to cut their prices like that. No. And I don't even, um, they're like the last ones to get on the plane, so you're not getting any overhead bin space. I mean, as you shouldn't, you didn't pay for it. (laughs) You get what you pay for. If you didn't pay for that overhead bin space, don't. I mean, seriously, I have that struggle because, I mean, you know, I'm always economy. Mm -hmm. And you have those people that, like, walk on, they put their bag, like, in the first why would you do that if your seat is all the way and in the back walking i hate I don't that get it i mean it must be nice like being in business and like first class because you know that's when flight attendants are like get your shit and walk <laughs> on <laughs> they do they'll come and pull it out for you hey i think you forgot your bag can right. you please take it back yeah no it's a whole different world honestly you're living my dream because i'm just one day i'm going to be on a non-rev flight and i'm going to get called up to the big leagues <laughs> i'm going to get put in business <laughs> class I don't I don't know when it'll I'm happen, a, but if I take it as hell. <laughs> oh, I will. I'm going to act like I belong there from the get-go. <laughs> just, just, can I please have another mimosa? But what is that like? Because obviously you're young and black, so it's got to be a different experience when, like, you walk into those, like, They're always confused. They're like, who is she? Like, the people that work there or just other people that are flying? Well, you know, it depends on the airline. So Qatar Airways has a really nice staff. Mm-hmm. So they don't discriminate. Plus, they already have a list of, like, who are their frequent flyers. Oh. So once they see that you have, like, a status, they kind of just like, okay. The other people are just like, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. But Qatar, I think, is really good for that. Emirates, on the other hand, man, those are some bougie-ass people. <laughs> those are some really sedity individuals. They just be like, what is this? And I think Delta is as well, but I think, like, White Americans kind of are just like, who the fuck, how'd you afford this? Which is weird for Delta because they're coming out of Atlanta, so you know that there are black people with money that are flying Delta out of Atlanta. I think more business travelers fly on Delta. So most of the time, I think it's either business people who bought those seats or they just got upgraded because they're a medallion member, Uh. which is like they're part of their Sky team. So I think that's it. I mean, sometimes I encounter, like, they look at me, but Mm -hmm. at this point, I just walk by, I'm like... (laughs) 
I screw my little tags on my um, bag so everybody can see that I'm a fancy fly member as well. <laughs> and I keep going by my business. I do know that one time I was in um, Barcelona. The first time I went to Barcelona, I mm-hmm. went with my then boyfriend. And we're in line to check in and everything. And um, we they have like the SPG line. Mm-hmm. So you have the member line and you have the regular line. And for whatever reason, check-in lines were very long. Mm-hmm. And so this guy walked in front to just get in front of me. Well, get in front of us. And I'm just like, excuse me, sir, what are you doing? He was like, well, I'm platinum. I was like, I don't give a shit. I said, I'm gold. He was like, yeah, but you're just gold. I'm like, but I'm in line. So did you think that there was a different line for you? He was just like. So then we got into it. I can't recall quite, but I was just like, what kind of room are you even staying in? Like, since you're such a platinum member, he was like, I've stayed here so many times this year. I said, okay, well, what kind of room are you staying in? (laughs) Because we're in a corner suite. So you explain to me how your stay is better than my ten thousand dollars stay. Well, I mean, but I mean, I feel like he was just there to pick up a little Russian hooker. So who knows? <laughs> In Barcelona, you. is that is that a thing? I mean, she looked cheap to me. Damn, jumping in front of me, <laughs> fucker. Uh, but I mean, I think you do. You you do. Um, I think sometimes my anger might be a bit displaced. But then other times it's really actually warranted. Mm -hmm. And it's just because I'm younger and I travel. Because even when I was traveling with the military Mm -hmm. or when I'm TDY for work, I always am going to figure out what I need to do so that I can upgrade. Because if you fly enough, Mm -hmm. then you want to fly, like, at least Comfort Plus. However, Delta's tripping because for Comfort Plus, they're charging, like, an additional $100 for the ticket. I mean, bitch, you already charged me, like, $800. Which is crazy because Comfort Plus, like, is... I'm trying to think, we did Americans, no, Cafe Pacific's Comfort Plus, or something like that. It was just plus. And basically, all it is is a little extra leg room, mm-hmm. and then the thing comes down in front so you can rest your feet on. Oh, but that's nice. It is. But, but you know that feature, they took off a lot of planes. I really enjoy the footrest. I mean, I like it. However, I could just bring my foot hammock. Have you seen those on, like, Amazon? So I've been trying to figure out, like, do you have to get on the floor to hang up this foot hammock? Like, how do you, what no. do you have to do? So you have it to depends. put it on the tray? Yeah. So it depends on the kind you have. So you plop down the tray, you hook it across, pull the tray back up, and then your feet have a nice little place to hang. So what about when you put the tray down to actually put your food on it? Oh, it's still fine. Because what you're doing is that you're hanging it on, like, the metal bracket that holds the tray. Mm. So you could still have the tray down and use it. I even have like a foot hammock at my desk at work. <laughs> I love it. I keep my legs fully extended out. So you don't I'm... ever put anything underneath your seat? Oh, no, I mean, I do. I just have like my little bag, but I kick it under. Sometimes like once we're in the air, I'll pull it out and then I can like push my legs under the seat. Mm. I just, I move, I, I shift about throughout a flight. Because I also never get up, which means that this is the most movement my legs are going to get. You know, every, how do you not pee on a 12-hour flight? Legit, coming back from Switzerland, I got up to use the restroom once, which I felt bad because I was in the aisle seat, but I was like, if I don't want to get up, we're not getting up. So what Everyone I do okay is, with that? <laughs> when I have a shoot, I'll, yeah, okay, I'm going to step over you. Mm-hmm. Because I will step right over you if you're not going to get up. No, if someone, like, if they ask, I'll get up. But I saw one person, like, shifting. They took off their headphones, and I'm like, well, I'm waiting for them to use their words. They didn't use their words. I'm like, well, then we're sitting. You know what, though? Coming here, I was in the window seat, and I had to pee really, really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't feel like bothering it because the girl that was in the aisle seat, she looked like she was really into her movie. That, Uh-oh. and I just didn't feel like getting up. So I just held it. I was like, God, this plane can't stop fast enough. Well, then you get into those times where it feels like every time you're about ready, you're like, oh, nope, someone just walked in. Like, okay, yeah. then I'll wait for it. And then a line forms. I'm like, well, I'll go after this movie finishes. Yeah, no, I sleep most of the time. But so I do, um, when I travel, I stay at the same hotel. I do mm-hmm. hotels or um, apartments because it's cheaper when you go with the group. Mm-hmm. And you can, it's much cheaper. Like, you can get a really nice place. Even with just, like, two people, you get an apartment? Um, No. Well, it depends mm-hmm. what kind of trip it is. If it's a, a weekend to Dubai, then mm-hmm. now I'll get my own room. Unless it's cheaper to get an apartment. Mm-hmm. Um, like one time we were going to stay at the Rixis, and it's a really nice place. It has a really nice pool. Mm-hmm. But I, I agreed to do the two bed uh, suite that's in the um, hotel. They like pick you up from the hotel, and mm-hmm. then they give so you a fancy. bottle of <laughs> Moet. Um, I was like, oh, this is nice. Uh, but no, I would do that normally if it's three or more, then we'll do hotels. 
or apartments. Which, I mean, I totally get that. At yeah. three people. You need your own rooms. Yeah. And it just depends on how long you're going to stay, whatnot. Mm-hmm. I believe in, like... And then, so, I think the most important part is for people that are traveling frequently. And if mm-hmm. you aren't... I absolutely hate it. Because, like, if you don't go through the TSA pre-check line, mm-hmm. you have to take off your shoes and stuff. Mm. I hate the people who come to the airport fully clothed and, oh, like, always. where were you going? Like, why did you come in steel toe boots that you knew you were going to have to take off and unlace from your, your thighs and your belt and your bracelet and your watch and your earrings and your metal plate in your chest. Like, why do you come in all of that? That takes you 15 minutes to undress <laughs> just so you can go and then beep again to find out that you forgot something. Some days it just doesn't go the way you expect. Hey, I... Before I had TSA pre-check, I had time or two where I walked through and I'm like, why was I wearing everything? Just... <laughs> Although Why usually, did I wear jingly clothes? Well, mainly it's because I'll be thinking, wear your heaviest stuff, which is going to be like your boots and your coat and your big sweater. So you're the person that's undressing for 15 minutes? I mean, I used to be, but now I'm pre-check like the rest of y'all. Because I told you about how Diambe left me multiple times. She's like, I'll catch you on the other side. <laughs> She'd rather wait for you on the other side than wait for you in line. Yes. But you know, sometimes it's about patience. Like, you just don't have the patience to wait in these lines. You know what? I... I do struggle with the lines, and it's not even that. It will be the people that are, like, doing the most. You mm-hmm. find that one person that they packed everything that they need to pull out at the bottom of their bag. Mm-hmm. Like, you knew your laptop was going to have to come out. It's like a surprise every time. Yes. My laptop. I was in Vegas. I was leaving from Vegas, and this lady was like, they said, oh, ma'am, you can't have water. And she turned around. She was just like, what? <laughs> I can't have my water? And I just it was like, oh. and the, the TSA lady turned around. She's like, she was like, oh, wait, the, the lady was like, what? I can't have my water since when? What? And the TSA lady turned around. She was like, 9-11. Shit. And the girl was like, hmm. And <laughs> tossed her water. She was just like, this bitch act like she didn't know what happened in 2001. My favorite are the people that, though, like, they have a bottle of water, like, I'm about to drink this entire thing. I was like, that's two liters. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Sitting there chugging. Did you ever see the videos of that lady? They were like, they told her that she couldn't take her alcohol through. She got her, um, like, Hennessy at a oh, duty free, no. and they were like, you can't take it through. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, fuck this. And so she, like, chugged half a bottle and then poured <laughs> the rest in the um, trash can. Because no one else She was like, if I can't that. have it, nobody else will have it. Man, did she even make it on her flight, though? She probably was really sick. That was probably yeah. a really long flight for her. But Ooh, she was just like, bad. fuck you. Ah. I was like, ooh. It's not gonna... I know that. That doesn't end well. So the last time we left the Bahamas, I wanted to buy a bottle of rum, but I knew I was connecting through New York, and I was on JetBlue, and I thought, oh, if I have to leave security and go back in, I don't want to waste this bottle. But then I didn't. it didn't occur to me that you already passed through customs when you're leaving the Bahamas, so oh. it's all in the same terminal. I definitely could have brought back that bottle of rum, but that stopped me from buying it, because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to throw out a brand new bottle after I've just spent, like, 20% VAT tax on it. I mean, I remember I got, mom likes this Antarctica white Hennessy that they make, Mm -hmm. and I normally get it in Dubai, Mm -hmm. and um, I had went to Atlanta, I was transiting through Atlanta's airport, and they were just like, you can't bring it in. Well, okay, they they put it through the scanner, Mm -hmm. and then were telling me, like, they swabbed the bottles, and like, oh, we can't bring this in, you can't carry it in. I'm like, it's in a sealed bag, like literally the duty-free sealed bag. They're like, nah, it doesn't pass. I said, so what am I going to do with it? She was like, well, I would love to take them. I said, no, what else is there to do with them? Mm-hmm. They're like, you'll have to check them. I've already checked my bag, so what am I going to do with it? <laughs> she was just like, you'll have to check it. So they literally took the liquor bottles mm-hmm. in the duty-free bag and just checked it through. They wrapped it up, I guess, in a little bit of plastic. Did it make it? Yeah, it made it. Oh, that's impressive. That's a good bottle. Right. But I'm just saying, like... Who does that? These are coming in the bags that they I've got it in. I can see you being that woman in there. You're like, excuse me. <laughs> I'm gonna pour it on the floor before I let you take it. Right. Well, I mean, alcohol through the airport, that's a challenge. Man. You're an upscale traveler. Well, put that very nicely. I do fly economy sometimes. It's what I can afford. I fly it. If I can upgrade via points, I will. If I can just buy straight out, I will. Um, but most of the time, like I, I do be, believe in the perks. Like if you're flying a lot, okay, you have like non-rev mm-hmm. so that it allows you to travel as much as you want. But I feel like you have tip, like tricks and trades that make you get through the airport 
mm-hmm. easier. You've bought pretty much all the same. You still have global entry, TSA pre-check, clear. Mm-hmm. Like if they said God will come pick you up and travel and carry you to your carousel, you would probably take that for a nominal fee. Well, I mean, carousel probably not because I carry on. I know, I know that you don't always. I live overseas. Yeah. What, am I coming home with one piece of clothing and two shoes? We were team carry on. There was a time that we were team carry on. I'm still team carry on. Normally, when I'm meeting up with you and I know we're moving around, I do not carry a bag that needs to be checked, which means that all my liquids are appropriate sized. I mean, I just like it's messy to check your bags. Wow. Well, haven't you, like, didn't you lose a bunch of stuff? I always lose stuff. No, no. I mean, we do know you always lose stuff. But didn't like a bunch of stuff? You lost a bag that had all your makeup. I didn't your lose brushes. the bag. I'm These sorry. Trifling ass agents in Miami's raggedy ass airport stole my bag. Delta compensated me. Oh, that's good. So the well, the funny thing is, I heard makeup doesn't count. They don't like replace things like that. I mean, not to incriminate myself as if I would do this because I am a law abiding citizen that follows all the rules. But, I mean, like, they need receipts. So you just give them receipts for stuff like Gucci bags and Louboutins, and then they gotta re- they'll gotta they replace up to twenty five or $3,000. They don't replace over three grand. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I, I do get that. Okay. So you were able to get, like, you were able to actually replace everything that you lost in your bag. Yeah, but, I mean, I filed the claim, and mm-hmm. I was able to replace it. However, comma, like, it's nice to get the money, but if you're traveling, like, actively in the middle mm-hmm. of a trip... You don't want to fucking lose your shit, especially yeah. if you painstakingly have planned out outfits and shoes and coordinated and you're on a world tour. I didn't have time to sit there and have to, I had to go shopping in the middle of my trip and they don't give you the money right away. It takes oh, them no. like 30 days. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like imagine if you had, so just say it wasn't name brand stuff or mm-hmm. something really expensive, but makeup brushes and makeup is it's costly, expensive. right? They stole my damn, my Chi blow dryer. It was like the handleless one. That's mm-hmm. a four hundred dollar blow dryer. How dry does your hair get? It's dry. It it better get dry at that price point. <laughs> <laughs> You're like it's handleless. It's like really nice. Mm-hmm. It blows out like special ions or something. I mean, the handle is what's always bugged me about <laughs> blow dryers. <laughs> Listen, boy George. <laughs> Whatever. No I'm judgment saying. zone, please. Okay, we, we shouldn't judge this fancy as blow dryer. <laughs> no, but so going through TSA, mm-hmm. I advise everybody to just please, please, please. Why do you have to wear pants with a belt? Like spandex, that's an option. You know, I do travel in jeans, so I'll wear a belt. Even if I have to take my belt off. I, yeah, but how long does it take you to take your belt off? Well, I mean, I like strip down pretty fast in an airport. I've, I've worked on that skill. And if you have kids... Make sure your kids are dressed appropriately so you don't have to take a thousand things out of their bags. Do you know in Atlanta, they don't let you, you have to take your food out of your bags your and food? put it in a separate, yes, a separate bin. What? Why? They're serious about it. They'll stop the whole line to get your food out. What do they think is in your burger? I'm not sure. Like, so if I was, say, bringing my bag of trail mix, I'd have to take that out too? I mean, I'm not sure if it's trail mix, but if it's like a meal. Okay. Some people are bringing like full fledged five course meal. I mean, they're not paying for airport food. Fuck yeah, that. I was gonna say prices gonna at the it. airport are crazy. So it is ridiculous. I would bring some food through. I actually wouldn't because you know how I feel about like people having to smell my food. I don't want that. Nope. I'm gonna buy my food if I'm not flying business. I'm gonna buy my food in the food court and eat it on the plane because airport food is the worst. Okay, so Diambe and I were flying. I don't even remember where we were going, but she's like, hey, let's stop and get these salads. And I'm like, oh, salad is good. Salad you can't smell. And then she's like, oh, I'm going to get the salmon salad. And I think, oh, well, we've got like 40 minutes before our flight, so I should be fine. I'm going to like eat my salad real quick or at least eat the fish. Well, it took them like 20 minutes to make these salads. And so by then <laughs> we were like boarding. Exactly. Specially that, chopped. Right? I was like, what? fancy ass salad is this so we get on the plane and I'm like oh I so want to eat this I'm so hungry but I didn't want to open it and she's not sitting next to me she's like three <laughs> rows in front of me and I just smell the smell waft back she's like, I don't give me. a shit I'm hungry right and I thought okay so people already smell it I haven't pulled out the salad now's my time go yeah. ahead eat it real quick right. while they can blame her <laughs> but it's probably 
probably worse because suddenly you're like it's it gets three times yes. you're like who is this with this <laughs> fish of all the foods to get this guy next to me was eating like trail mix it was the loudest trail mix ever <laughs> woke me up out of my sleep i was like what's this I you know, know i will say though mm-hmm. i do fly now i put a face mask on mm-hmm. uh because for what, whatever reason every time i get on the plane i'm getting sick and then i have like this little this little blanket thing i put over my head and i put my feet in the little packet Mm -hmm. and then it has a little pocket on the front that i can put my phone and whatever else inside you know do you have like a neck pillow too of course i have a neck pillow i mean i don't know if that's an of course thing i carried mine once and i've never carried it again how do i mean i don't want to get a cramp in my neck listen you put the neck right here like a neck Mm -hmm. brace and you just zonk you know it's just like that oh you know but you don't really go down it's just kind of like a it's like a little cloud right there i like this yeah. So f- you remember in Japan seeing people sit on the train, how they'd fall asleep, but they'd sit like straight up like this and their head wouldn't go anywhere? Just like this? They're weird. Yeah. So I got used to sleeping like that. So that's how I sleep on a plane. The most I'll ever do is tilt back. And it's not until I feel like my jaw hanging open that I'm like, okay, get it back together and like back to it. What kind of sleeping are you doing that you can feel when your jaw opens? That's got to be the longest plane ride, most uncomfortable thing ever. You know what? I am a really light sleeper on a plane. Like, if I know I'm gonna, there are people around, I don't want to get into a heavy sleep. Because, like, the one time I did, I felt like I had been just pulled out of the world and I was in a dream state. <laughs> and once I realized, like, my it just hit me that I wasn't, like, by myself. And so I woke <laughs> up and, like, a friend, I'm like, <gasps> and this woman, she looked like she thought I was about to do something to the plane. She's like, what's going on? What's wrong? <laughs> Is everything okay? I Did you like, have a premonition? <laughs> right? Did you see something? <laughs> Tell me. All I could say is, it's like, I just fell into too deep of a sleep and I, I just couldn't sleep that deeply. And she's like, okay. <laughs> I was like, there's nothing happening. I, I just happened to wake up with a bit of fright. You know what? I was flying to, um, I was on the plane. I think we were going to Dubai. It was probably Dubai. And there was mm-hmm. a whole like Arab family. I don't know what they were. I'm not going to say what they were. I don't know what they were. But they were all very afraid of flying. Mm -hmm. And you know how you get, like, you get scared. Yeah. And so, like, if the mom gets scared, then the kids start getting scared. Well, we hit a little turbulence. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my God, you would have almost thought that somebody fucking blew the wing off the plane and we were about to crash. They was just (laughs) like, all you heard was, hey, ah, ah, Jesus. They didn't say Jesus. They were Muslim. But (laughs) they were just really, really scared. Mm -hmm. And I just, I had to, like, really turn around just to make sure... What is going on? Right. And they were back there like holding on and crying, real tears. And they were just so scared. And I'm just like, it's just a bit of turbulence, people. Just a bit of turbulence. And then it just kept up a bit. I will say it might have been a bad flight. It was a little bit rocky. But the little kid was just like, ah! I was like, guys, they're not going to make it. When it finally, the plane finally hit the ground. Why do pilots slam into the ground? Can somebody tell me that? They just like to bounce. Do you I mean, you just bounce right down. Well, no. That's Message and let me know why we're slamming into the ground as if we didn't see it coming. Like, that's got to be hard to land, though. This I would is what your job is. You do this on a daily basis. I mean, like, you never do know you, who they are. Do you slam into walls when you're driving your car? You don't know how I drive. You don't know my life. It was a question. <laughs> <laughs> that was what that was. <laughs> I mean, I anyway. think you drive fairly okay. Nevertheless, I think I don't get people who are afraid to fly. Because to me, like, yeah, you'll get turbulence and sometimes, and I had one time where it felt like the plane hit a drop. It felt like my stomach go up. But then I reminded myself, A, I'm more likely to die in a car crash, and B, I'm more likely to die horribly in a car crash, where it's like at least a plane on impact. More than likely. Yeah, but you know how long it would take to get to impact? I mean, it gives you some time to think. Think about what's going on. You're like flying around. Do you think that little whack-ass seatbelt is going to hold you in? As you go crash? Well, let's hope it doesn't go that way. In all fairness, I feel like the, the likelihood of dying in a plane crash is pretty uh, minimal. But, <laughs> I mean, Malaysian Air keeps going missing and everybody still is flying them. I don't know what's going on. I bet you their tickets are really reasonably priced, though. I haven't even looked, but I'm going to take a look. Did they, they didn't change their name? Who in the Asian Airlines? Who in the hell is buying a Malaysian Airlines ticket? Someone who wants a reasonably priced ticket. <laughs> you got to get to where you're going. I'm out here playing craps with my life. <laughs> Fuck it. Two tears in a bucket. Let's go. They said $30, guys. I'm going to make it. One of every 200 flights, you have a, I feel like, pretty good odds of making it. 
I'm not saying it's one of every 200. It's probably far, far fewer. I mean, Boeing is going through it right now with their plane issues. So. They are. That is rough. Honestly, I feel like that's driven up the price of tickets because now right. a lot of airlines who had a lot of flights mm -hmm. are having to cut down on what they're doing. This is true. So, And then they probably have to really get some money in the pot to pay mm. for the people that are suing. Are people suing? Man, of course. I, I stay out of that. You wouldn't sue if your plane went down? Well, I mean, I probably wouldn't live, but... <laughs> <laughs> so if you lived, would you still sue? It depends. I mean, I might just be so happy to be alive, but maybe. Maybe I'd be litigious. I don't know. We're suing. Okay. Okay. That's what we're doing. I, I want to quit soon. That's the best and fastest way to quit. Is it? Get into a plane crash? You get into a plane crash and we sue. Don't you put that on me, Ricky Bobby. Hey. You trying. <laughs> you trying me. Knocked on the Indeed. plywood. I mean, it could be higher quality than plywood. It's nice plywood anyway. Okay. Only the best for you because I know how you like to travel. Only. So. So when you're looking at hotels, what are your, I mean, other than generally just staying in Bonvoy, what are your determining factors between like, this isn't the place I'd stay versus this is the place I'd stay? Reviews. I read a lot of reviews. I look at all the pictures and I really, really look at the pictures because I want to see what the sheet quality might look like. Mm -hmm. And I know you can't really see the thread count. However, you can tell by the decor if it's going to be a nice bed. True. You know what you can never tell? Towel quality. And that's a that big is deal. The worst. You know, I, I actually take my towels, I unfold them, I look at them because what I won't use is a towel that has any kind of marks. And I absolutely hate when the towel has a little piece of hair in it. Ooh. I'm just like, what the fuck were you doing? Like rolling around a goddamn towel? How'd your people care getting the goddamn towel like this? I mean, I, I don't know why I'm envisioning how it could happen, but I'm sure it could happen. That's Nevertheless, disgusting. I just feel like places that have small towels, like towels that are like just this big. Like a hand towel? Yeah. It, basically, it is a hand towel that you're trying to wrap around your entire body. You're like, where? Can I just get a no bath floor sheet? mat. Oh, that's gross. No floor mat. Right. Like, so what do you want me to do? Just step on my, with my bare feet on this? It's like, you better give me some extra towels because I'm throwing them on the ground one way or the other. Basically. And yeah. you're changing my tiles every day. So I can ensure that you're changing my tiles. I take all the tiles and I throw them on the floor. <laughs> throw them on the floor, the shower, the bathtub. Oh, you know what? So I do feel bad about just like bunches of extra laundry. So I only do that with the towel I've used. Nope. I mean, I pretty much use all the towels. Granted, I do think when I leave a hotel, I should just throw all the towels down. Because I think, what if it's still folded neatly? And they think, well, I don't need to replace this. And I'm telling you, it. some people are really nasty. I mean, no. Imagine if you had to clean 100 rooms. Some days you might want to take a shortcut. Imagine if you were PMSing and you had just <laughs> had a really bad fight and you had to go in and clean up 100 rooms. That's true. That's half the time for you laying on the bed like, fuck this. <laughs> we're getting half cleaned. Oh my god. Oh, so I stayed in one hotel and it was I can't remember the brand, but it was a nice hotel, but they had no comforter. It felt like a heavy top sheet and that was all. Like a weighted top sheet? Yeah, I was freezing. I don't understand that when they put the sheet and then like a little thin blanket and then another sheet. So it's not a duvet. It's like, did you, mm -hmm. how much money did you save by not buying the duvet? They didn't save any money because I cranked it up to 79 in my room. Damn. I decided, I was like, we're going to sweat it out in here. I like to sleep in a sweat lodge. And if you don't give me the blankets to make it work, I'm going to make it work one way or the other. No, but okay. So I read a lot of reviews. I like mm -hmm. to really take in, in um, account what people's experiences were. So if it was a really good staff, that always makes up for a crappy hotel. But really depends on the, I mean, I'm not going to book that hotel, but I'm saying for some, it makes up because they obviously yeah. can't afford it. The other thing is I always put my stuff in the safe. Mm-hmm. So if you stay at a nicer hotel, uh, you have you feel more comfortable with somebody not stealing your stuff. No, I would agree. Oh, so you know what? The place I stayed in in Amsterdam, like the last day, so not the one that we stayed in together, but they didn't have one of those like locks, the um, like a deadbolt or not a deadbolt. A, um, All those little flip things. Yes, on the door. And so I got there and I was just like laying in bed and I was just so excited to take my pants off. That's all I really wanted was to get there, take my pants off and just lay down for a little bit. Right. And then I think the housekeeper like opened the door and it took me a while to figure out it was a housekeeper. I thought it was like another guest. So I called down. I was like, hey, there's something wrong with like my key. I need you to change it out. 
and they're like no 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 one should have that key and I was like no someone just walked into this room so bring up another key and I'm certain that they didn't change anything they just brought they up, just an brought up key. another key yeah just to make me feel better but then I thought okay so now I've got to start looking at this but how do you find that out beforehand you can't Exactly. If somebody doesn't, but you can, okay, so I, not that you should travel like this, but you've seen those little door stopper alarm things? Yes. You can put one of those in your bag and, and put it in the door. I would get one of those only because like, I happen to be traveling alone for that. Yeah. And I thought, well, what would happen if someone like just came in here? It's like a SVU episode. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes in, they rape you, they murder you, and then they leave out. It's a lot of death in this episode. I know there is. Nevertheless, I don't know if a nice hotel versus a not as nice hotel is really going to change all of that, but I definitely wouldn't feel comfortable staying at a place that doesn't have little flip locks. Mm, you know what my like my break my deal breaker is when mm. like absolutely breaks my heart when I get to a <laughs> hotel room and they don't have breaks your heart. What is it? It just crushes me. Slippers. That's what crushes you. What kind of uncouth place doesn't provide you slippers? I'm a slipper thief. I actually call up, get more slippers, and put them in my suitcase. Sometimes I think we're living different lives, and then you really reinforce it <laughs> with shit like when they don't have a slipper. No! I mean, I didn't even mention turndown service, but the slippers for your feet. Like, who wants to walk around on a barefoot? I mean, in all fairness... I did stay somewhere that had slippers, and I was like, oh, this is nice. Right. Because they had the hard floors. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is real, real civil. It is. And then they, like, put the little mat on the thing, put your slippers there when they turn down your service. It's really nice. I don't really care about chocolates on my pillows, but I definitely care about the slippers. I'm not take chocolates on my pillows, especially if you're in, like, good places. Like, like Bruges. Oh, yeah, because they had some good chocolates on those pillows. They did. Like, that wasn't your just average, I just ran out to the Quickie Mart and got some chocolates. That was nice. That was nice. So, I mean, I would take that. I don't know if I've stayed in too many places that did turn down service. Like, really, my high-end hotel experiences are usually with you. Like, the first time <laughs> we went to uh, to Thailand, the hotel in Koh Samui was nice, but the hotel in Bangkok... Was that Muse? Muse, yeah. Hotel Muse was nice, though. That's a really nice brand. Yeah. And that room, like, that was actually a good room. Because you know how a lot of yeah. times you'll go into, like, a nice hotel with basic rooms? Mm -hmm. Like, with the clawfoot tub and then the window that went frosty and you could right. frost mm -hmm. it and unfrost it with the button. I was like, oh, my goodness. This is so lavish. It was, it was nice. It was a nice room. I just, um, I don't know. I just always kind of, I... I also like to know what collection that hotel is part of because mm. then it tells you the the quality is going to make or be at. Yeah. And so most of the time I'm just like, if I can't say where I want, then I don't want to go and I'll just forego it because I just don't like, like I don't, I hate mattresses that are like cement. Yeah. Um, I'm not going somewhere that has like me and the mosquitoes in a room or together. Mm -mm. It just drives me nuts. I was in Kenya <laughs> and it was actually a really cute little boutique hotel. But it had like little uh, cabana hut things. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, they had told us, make sure you keep the windows and doors locked. Mm -hmm. Do not open them and don't try to get fresh air like that because we have like the little monkeys coming around. <laughs> so you have to protect yourself. I'm like, okay. So I'm in the room and I'm taking a shower and I hear some noise and I think it's the person that's in the room with me. So I'm like, hey. And then no response. I'm like, hey and then no response so then i'm just like hmm, what the fuck so i look outside and the monkey has opened the window you and unlocked he's, it i don't know how he did this i didn't unlock it he, he like opened the window set. and was reaching in for the chocolate he was getting the chocolate out of like the little bowl there because he mm -hmm. enjoyed eating the chocolate so what did you do did you just let him take it or did you try and scare him away i let him have that I would have too. I was like, I can know. you close the window behind you? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, sir. Thank you for visiting. <laughs> I'm white ass naked. <laughs> you think I'm about to battle this monkey? <laughs> Listen, they already told me if he gets the grade, he's like, if he grabs hold of your stuff, it's over. He makes it to the tree, ain't nobody getting your stuff. It's over. So lock your passports up. So did you lock the window after that? Yes. I locked the window. Um, I pushed chairs in front of like the doors. Because <laughs> I'm like, how the fuck did this monkey get in? And these are like some really smart monkeys. I, I watched them come still there. They were stealing um, bread from the buffet. I mean, this hotel should probably just go the Las Vegas route and not even allow you to open your windows if that's like, if it's that much of a problem. 
Right. Because I, you would see like the cleaners in the rooms and they would open up the windows while they're like making up the bed and stuff. Maybe just to air it out a bit. Uh-huh. And then the monkeys would come in and I saw one lady because it was one older Kenyan lady and she was like chasing the monkey out. She was like, get out. <laughs> and he just ran out like, ah. She's tripping today. <laughs> she was fine yesterday. But mm. I don't know. So it's, it, you, know, you can't really, I didn't even write a review on that. I should have wrote I, I like TripAdvisor a lot as well. But, I mean, is that really a negative review? That's a pretty funny... I, granted, like, had the monkey No, it's definitely not a, a negative review. I'm just happy he didn't walk up and want to take a shower with me. <laughs> I don't even know what I would have did at that point. <laughs> I, I don't know. If I would just had to be like, hey, come on in. At that point, you wouldn't just shut the bathroom door. <laughs> they didn't have a bathroom door. Oh, it was shit. like an open air room oh. type situation. And the shower didn't have a door either. It was just one of those openings that you walk <laughs> into. I mean, I was just at, at, at that monkey's worst. I don't know. Oh, my he goodness. What kind of studio? Like, such, so, it was like a little bungalow place. thing. Like, those open mm. bungalows with the mosquito net around the bed. No, I've been in those bungalows. They have real bathroom doors, though. Like, I even stayed in one that had an outside shower. And you literally, it was felt like you were locking yourself out of your room to go to the bathroom. <laughs> that was Bali? No, that was... Uh, Cambodia, when I was stayed on the side of the mountain and the thunder woke me up. And I just kept on thinking, someone's going to shoot me. In your eco-lodge. Yeah. Oh, that's this a is, great experience. I, I don't know why I stayed in two eco-lodges. After the first, I really should have Oh, understood. you did it again. Yeah. Because I don't know why I kept on... Like, literally, even after that trip, I've looked at other eco-lodges and I'm like, oh, that just sounds so charming. And then I read this one thing and they're like, well understand that you're in the animal's environments. So sometimes there will be rats and there will be snakes. But rats here aren't dirty creatures because this is their nature. Like, they're in their habitat. And I was like, well, you have <laughs> lost me, me so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be here. I'm not out here talking about snakes are in their habitat. I'm just visiting. <laughs> I'm like, no. Enjoy. Enjoy, Anaconda. Yeah. I'll be back. Nah, I'm yeah. not doing that. I don't know. So then I just, just that's how I, I don't know. That's how I pick hotels. So I just pick them. And Airbnbs, I really look for really nice Airbnbs with good reviews. Actually, if the pictures are really good, mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and book because they normally have corresponding price points. And then like yeah, uh, air, airlines, I typically fly the same airlines or families of that airline all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I only check bags if typically I'm coming home and I'm bringing mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff with me because if I'm just locally traveling, I'm going to roll stuff up and try to fit it into like a carry on and a backpack. And then um, let's see. What else do I do? Well, okay. So you know what's crazy for you? How many bags do you own? Because every time I see you, you have a different suitcase. Like, you have at least four different checked suitcases and a bunch of carry-ons. Are these just, like, do you just randomly buy bags when you're traveling and you run out of space? No. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have my Manal backpack that I use for my carry-on, right? Mm -hmm. And that pretty much works. Okay. If I'm, if I'm going on, like, now I take it on my military TDY trips, right? Mm -hmm. But... Going through the airport, I have several, like, carry-on bags. Mm -hmm. I had one that was a Burton bag, which is a really good snowboarding type of bag. And when oh, I was yeah, in yeah. Afghanistan in the rocks, the wheels and the hard case at the back really worked well to, like, drag it through mm -hmm. the rocks. So I had that. And then I had bought, um, I think it was, like, a Tumi, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a four-wheel Tumi. Oh. So that was trash. I tried to carry it through the airport. It was horrible. I wanted to like throw that shit out. It you was... like the four wheel bag though? Well, you don't care. Yes, because this one you're like dragging behind you. Imagine yeah. if you had like a little toddler that you're just hauling behind you by this arm. It's so awkward. Your elbow starts to hurt. You know? You know it... I don't know. So I had a four wheel bag and I never really enjoyed carrying it because it felt weird. Maybe because I'm so short. It felt like my arm was like right there and I just have no room to like let it extend and just walk next so to me. So this is what I'm saying. So then I had another four world bag. <laughs> okay. That was an American tourister mm -hmm. and the little handle jiggled a lot, right? Oh yeah. I have carpal tunnel. It started getting on my nerves as I was like, you know, traversing through the airport mm -hmm. and in Dubai they have carpet in their airport. It is the hardest thing. Like a plush carpet? No, it's it's like a, it's a, it's a regular... Flat carpet. Flat carpet, but it's still like you're, you're mm -hmm. pushing along your bag no matter how you're dragging or whatever. It slows mm -hmm. you down. So then I just bought a Samsonite bag, mm -hmm. which is, is very that nice. One? That is the, the pink salmon one I had. That okay. was like copper. Um, 
The handle is pretty sturdy. The mm-hmm. wheels glide. Isn't the one that you like sent flying down some escalators? I was picking up in Vegas and it just started falling down the escalators. No, no, this is. I just literally got this one. Oh, okay. This was my new gift to myself. Oh, so these are different pink bags. The pink hard shell bags. Ah, the pink hard shell bags. Mm -hmm. Man, I hate those bags. (laughs) Absolutely hate them. So you kicked it down the escalator like that? Did I kick it down the escalator? I don't think you kicked it. I think you were trying to do too much and you just watched it. And it started going and I was like, she's going to like walk down after it. And no, she just watched it. Just like, okay. No. So the new Samsonite bag I have is really nice. And then I got the little backpack that slides over the handle. Oh, nice. Glides through. I'm like gliding through the airport. Like, I feel very <laughs> fancy. Like, I'm just moving. Mm-hmm. I'm gliding. Mm-hmm. And I'm gliding. It's a very nice um, suitcase. So, yes, I do have several. But it's a trial and error, you know? So do you get rid of the old ones or do you just have like a boneyard of suitcases? I have a boneyard of suitcases. I need to start getting rid of them. What do you do with old suitcases? I bet there's a bunch of places you could donate them to. Here's an idea. <laughs> wow. I'll bring them home next time to donate them. You should. Someone someone would love those. Right. Because I just feel snobbish. I mean, I go into the like, suitcase stores mm-hmm. and I just like walk around the store with like different ones. I think they you think I'm to. broke and I'm not going to buy the suitcase. But I'd be in there like this with the head. <laughs> I'm like... How do you guys think this handle is? <laughs> and I'm just walking around the store with them. They're like, this is the show and she's going to run off with this suitcase. They're like kicking tires and stuff. Right. I'm like, so if I had to like immediately swinkle. I like that you walk in. You're like, excuse me, let me set up an obstacle course. I got to make sure I can zig and zag. Right. I'm talking to them like they understand them, you know, because I have a carpal tunnel in my wrist. This guy was like, are you care. buying the suitcase or not? <laughs> I was like, I didn't really like the way it felt. <laughs> Thank you for your time, sir. Oh, uh, <laughs> sometimes I do kind of want a suitcase on wheels. Like coming back from a trip when it's been a long time and I just feel like my back is hurting. <laughs> Even the hip flaps at the point, you're like, it's, this is still heavy, especially if I travel with the laptop. So do you travel with a bunch of electronics? No. <laughs> I don't no. because I don't use them. That's true. Amateur hour. Like the people that are out there... Fucking around with their knee-high boots that lace all the way up to their goddamn thighs. Why? <laughs> what are you doing on vacation with your laptop? I mean, I've used it a time or two. For work? But, yeah. However, if I'm being honest, now, unless I really have something I know I'm going to work on, I try not to. Cell phones have so much memory with mm-hmm. clouds and great resolution. You don't need to bring anything. So I literally just come with my cell phone and they're always like, ma'am, no laptop? No. Are you sure? What did I just say? I said no. I do like when they question you three times. I was like, w- you're going to know if I'm trying to sneak this laptop through. Yeah, but some people really don't want to pull their laptop out and they must, the amateur hour, they don't think that they're going to get caught and then the whole bag has to come back. I'm like, what were you thinking, guy? You know what? So Switzerland, they told me I was going to put all my liquids in like one clear plastic bag. And I don't know why I wasn't taking them at their word. Because some <laughs> places will say that, but and then, then they don't. Yeah. Yeah. No, she pulled my bag to the side and had me pull out all my liquids and started shoving it in this little plastic bag. And I was sitting there thinking, what am I going to have to get rid of? Well, obviously all my makeup's going to make it in there because that's like the most expensive thing and then the other stuff I'm like well it'll be a loss she's like no we can make this work <laughs> I was like oh it's like a soft tube please don't do that it's expensive it's either that or the trash I would have actually rather just tossed out the lotion than have her <laughs> do like victimize my makeup I was on my way to Santorini and um Voltec Voltec they first off the Greece security far and they ain't playing them games with you <laughs> 3.2 ounces, throw that shit away. <laughs> You're like, it's like 0. 0.2 over. Are you going to check it for 60 euro or what? Shit. <laughs> okay. Throw it away. <laughs> Can I buy it again? And then I'll play. But I think a lot of the European airports don't really play. Oh, they don't. No, they get serious with it. So you got to mm-hmm. be careful how you pack though. So I, yeah, I don't overdo any electronics. Really, I just travel with my cell phone and my charger. Now and my headphones. Do you do over-ear headphones or like just your AirPods? First off, AirPods don't fit in my ears. Oh. Apple didn't make them for me. They're not ergonomically comfortable for my little holes. Um, and secondly, I think that's a horrible idea to fly with because um, this one guy, he recently on this flight here, mm-hmm. it fell out and he was like crawling all over the airplane. <laughs> 
he was on the floor like making people get up. Like I just think I just dropped it underneath your seat. I'm just I would like, too at that price point. I get it, but I mean, you just look like a fool with a big ass man on the ground. Like <laughs> I'm about to find my AirPod. <laughs> you know what? So I fell asleep with mine in, and one of them came out. Thankfully, I had a scarf on and I had braids, and so they fell into my hair. But I had a moment where I thought, if I think I'm gonna fall asleep, we can't listen to music. <laughs> I can only listen to it if I'm like sitting up and I know I'm awake. If I even start feeling a wink attired, like these shits out and put them in a safe place. No, I have some both over ear noise canceling headphones, which are really nice for when you have the baby screaming. But I, I travel with two ways. So if I am flying economy, I bring my both over head headphones with the little adapter so I can mm -hmm. put it in the seat thing. And then I bring my pillow, my mouth. They give you the eyepiece and the blanket. Mm -hmm. If I'm flying business, then I don't have to turn any of it because they give you headphones. True. So... I'm going to start carrying a eye mask because oh, there's always that one person on like an overnight flight when you're chasing the sun, especially like coming back from Switzerland. That want to open up the window yeah. blind. Like, what are you doing? Take your ass to bed. Because the sun never sets. And so I was like, just, just close your window. And then finally it hit just right where it was in my eye, but I'm in like the middle four seats mm -hmm. in on the aisle seat. And this person's at the window. And I was like, just don't be that person. It's like, Hey, shut your window. But Shit. I'm like, it's right in my eye now. And I thought, okay, next time just have your little eye, eye mask. This lady was like, her daughter was in the middle seat and she was on the aisle and I was in the window seat. And um, she was like, her daughter kept looking over out the window. I'm like, mm, okay. And then the lady was like, excuse me, do you mind if you switch seats? I said, with who? She was like, you know, my daughter would like to look out the window. I said, where would I sit? She's like, in the middle seat. I said, why would I do that? <laughs> she was like, she wants to look out the window. I was like, you should have bought her the window seat. Shit. You didn't even want to Enjoy your flight. Oh, because you don't like aisle seats, though. No. I, yeah, I can't sleep on aisle seats. It's the most oh. uncomfortable thing. Like, like, your neck hurts, even with your little pillow. And then they're going to want to get up because yeah. they're not considerate. Already they're asking me, can I get up out of my window seat? And take a middle seat. I could see if she's seat. like, hey, do you mind if we shift over and you can take the aisle seat? But to say, hey, would you switch for this middle seat? That's straight disrespectful because you know they're going to have conversations over you too. Right, like you didn't want to sit next to your child? <laughs> she wanted some alone time. <laughs> not on my watch, buddy. Oh, man, that reminds me. One time I was flying from Dubai to Atlanta and I was on um, – I was on the plane, and so I'm in the middle seat because I was flying. I just happened to have a middle seat, and I'm sitting there asleep, and there was this kid next to me, maybe like nine years old. Mm -hmm. and he was just like, oh, I'm flying. I was like, oh, good for you. He's like, yeah, my mom is up in first class. I was huh. like, damn, son. He's like, so I get to fly back here by myself because I'm a big boy. I was like, that's so cute that okay. you tried to see the positive out of being abandoned. He felt very, he was like really, really happy. I was like, okay, cool. So we're sitting there flying. And I fell asleep because I'm flying with my um, then boyfriend and I'm laying on his shoulder asleep. And when I wake up, like I feel like this whole head nudged in my boob. And I look <laughs> over, this little boy is like snuggled into me. And I was just like, get over me. What are you doing? Move. He's like, and he looked angry. Like, why would you not let me lay there? It's a whole pillow. <laughs> I was like, if you don't move your ass off of me, the fuck is wrong with you? Lay on that window. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, he's in the window seat so he's, he okay. yeah no he preferred to sleep on me and i don't know i must have been so knocked out that i didn't even feel him just i just woke up like what's going on <laughs> and then he wanted to keep getting up and running to go see his mom i was like look tell her you're about to sit up there with her or you're about to sit here you are choosing he was just like who is this lady man you were so disrespectful with other people's kids too like consistently they're disrespectful <laughs> to me who snuggles on somebody else's breasts? I mean, he... Well, at nine, yeah, you know better. I was going to say, at like maybe seven, <laughs> but like at nine. Let me yeah. let a nine-year-old... When you wake up and a nine-year-old snuggled onto you. I just hit him in the head. Like sometimes you just like gently just like hit someone. Yeah. Oh, man, that, was, that reminds me. I was on another flight. I don't know where I was going, but there was this guy. And you know how you have the arm... Um... So if you're sitting, mm -hmm. where does your arm naturally go? Does it go right here or do you put yours right here? And if you were in the middle seat, where do you think your arm should go? I mean, if I'm in the middle seat, I'm taking over the full armrest, like straight out like this. I don't even normally sit like this, but if I'm in the middle seat, I like to assert my dominance over front to back of the armrest. Now, if I'm in another seat, I'll... So if I'm in an aisle seat, I literally 
like, here's where people are and here's the aisle. I'll just be like this the entire flight until they're hitting me with the drink cart. And then <laughs> I was like, damn, this is going to you. Yeah, no, if I, if I hear the drink cart coming, I'm like, get in. But, and if I'm in the window seat, I'm just hanging out, like, right next to the window and leaving the armrest open. But if I'm in the middle seat, I, I really do want to get there first because I want to assert my dominance. And if I can't get there first, then I start with my elbow and then I just kind of move it in. And then I slowly spread out. Yeah, we would fight. This guy did that. He, like, I had my elbow right here Mm because I had the window. And then he had his arm right here, which makes sense, you know, 50-50 that you got to split the armrest. You only paid for your little seat. So then he, like, nudged my arm off. Because he's the middle seat. Bruh, you paid for the seat, not the armrest. The seat. So... Yeah, I will, it woke me up because I was just like, who just shoved me? Well, see, that's because he was subtle. Like, he had no subtlety, no chill with that. You just, you slowly move it until people are, like, away from you. And then suddenly you're like, ah. Nah. No, you got to. I moved his arm back. Sit next I was to me. Like this. It's so subtle. You don't even know it's happening. Oh, next fighting. thing you know, you're, like, over here. Nope. I need an arm rest because my arm is going to have to rest. So where's my arm going to go? Like, now I got to cook. He better sit in your lap. Anyway, see, I'm gonna have to share it with you like I show share it with him. You only pay for your seat. You didn't pay for all of the armrests. You know what? You should have bought both seats and stuff like that. I was like, we're about to be holding hands. I'll make this real uncomfortable. I will lace my fingers through yours. The funny part is, I know you wouldn't. No, I mean, I might not lace my fingers, but I would like put my hand up there and just look away. As long as you don't make eye contact, people are like, do they know what they're doing? And they they know you know what you're doing. I hope one creeper gets you one day and just hold your hand back. You know, the whole flight. Pepper spray all day. Now you're going to pepper spray him because you're the one that <laughs> I, you were acting weird and you're going to pepper spray this? Jesus. Hashtag me too. Watch out, guys. Well, that's that's a way to, to leave this. <laughs> I don't think anything more needs to be Remember, said. Remember, you only bought 50% of the armrest. Thank you. That's how we leave it. <laughs>